Hey, Scott and Jeff here with another installment of How to Be Happy, right? What makes you happy? How about being on the up and up? A little bit of honesty goes a long way in terms of your happiness. Everybody wants to be happy. We know that. Yeah. You want to be happy. I want to be happy. Happiness doesn't just happen. Generally speaking, it is the result or the consequence of deliberate decisions and actions that we take and or make. And in this particular episode, Scott, Jeff, mm. uh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, integrity and being on the up and up, which is one of the seven ups of happiness from the book, The Seven Ups of Happiness, which um, you'll be able to purchase at any time if you'd like by clicking on the link that you see on the screen right Operators now. Operators are standing by. Well, they're not operators. Uh, well, yeah. Well, maybe they are. I don't they're know. They're AI bots. I don't know. We're here at this beautiful mm -hmm. theater because we like to get up and get out and go do things. And uh, we're here before anyone is even here. And in fact, before the actors even begin the performance. But imagine, if you will, that we are in fact at the theater during a performance or right before it starts. And our seats are clear up there because that's what we paid for. Here we are on the third row, yep. third row center. Mm -hmm. And we have suddenly these very good seats. Yeah, because no one was sitting here. Nobody was sitting here. Have you ever found yourself in that kind of situation? Hey, if they're not here by the end of Act One, they're not going to show up. Who's going to know? Yeah. I mean, these, these are empty seats. Why should they go unfilled? Now, that may or may not be a policy of the theater. Sometimes they do want to bring uh, patrons down and fill in the front seats so that the actors feel like they have more of a connection mm -hmm. to the audience and they don't see empty seats. But what about at a ballpark? at the stadium for a basketball game. How many times have you either been tempted to or have left your seat up in the upper bowl mm -hmm. and said, hey, see those ones down there on the front row or the ones right above the dugout? Let's go take those. They've been empty for three innings. Right, wrong, good, bad? Not gonna happen though, because uh, I remember I was at a baseball game. I was up in Toronto, right? And uh, I tried to move down and they said, no, 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 you can go anywhere else in the upper bowl, <laughs> right? But they got the people standing there, and you've been to college football games, you know, we've been there, and they, no, 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 you got to show us your ticket first before you uh, even have a chance of thinking that you're going to get a better seat. Because the fact of the matter is, you've paid yeah. $14 for your seat. This seat costs $68. If you come down and sit in the seat, even though it's empty, you're basically taking $50 out of our pocket. Yeah. You didn't pay for the seat, therefore you shouldn't sit in it. Now, that's not the point of this particular episode. The point of this episode is, do you have the integrity to say no when that type of fairly easy choice is placed before you? Ooh, and I'm telling you, today, uh, people sometimes are just not standing for it. I just read a story the other day about a guy in first class, and he was trying to get his two buddies back in coach upgraded. They wouldn't do the upgrade. So what this guy in first class does is after the flight is taken off, he's ordering extra drinks and he's taking them back to his friends. And uh, the, the guy gets in big trouble. It's right. to me. I mean, I know like at the movies, they say, you know, that it's, you know, if you buy the limitless bucket of popcorn, you can come back and you can fill yeah. it up and that's the drinks, the you can do that's that. fine. You can do that all you want. I still think it's kind of funny and maybe it's not necessarily unethical, but I think it's funny that after the movie's over yeah. and, the, and everything's done, people are back in line to refill their, their bucket of popcorn yeah. and their drinks and take it home and take it home. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's like, like going to Olive Garden and saying, we've got a bottomless salad and bottomless breadsticks. And yeah. right before they're done and everyone's full and they've paid their bill, they go, yeah, let's, uh, I'd like some more breadsticks, please, yeah. uh, and more salad, and a box. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and would you mind throwing in some chicken cacciatore as well? Yeah, why don't you get you some know? more entrees while we're at it? Yeah. The fact of the matter is, is that generally speaking, you're not going to be happy, or as happy as you could no. be, if you're living your life by that sort of loose, yeah. kind of loose ethical decision making. Yeah. You know the thing that bothers me, Scott, and makes me unhappy is when people feel this, but I'm entitled. You know, you are serving me, so I should be able to take not just the free stuff you've offered, but I should be able to get more of the stuff that's not free. It's, it's my entitlement. Yeah, yeah, right. Just, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, you, yeah, your profit margins are so high. You yeah. can totally afford if I Here's take these this. mugs home with me yeah. or these towels or these sheets yeah. or whatever is from. Have you ever stolen anything from a hotel? And literally, word is stolen. Uh, honestly, I don't think I have. Yeah. I have not taken a towel. I'm like, why would I want to put a wet towel or a dry that one? That a thousand other people's yeah. wet 
bots have used. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not going to happen. So to kind of wrap things up here a little bit, we'll do our sort of our traditional uh, top three list, top three liars of all time. We don't know each other's lists. We, it's always a surprise. Yep, Who do you have yep. your number so, three top uh, liar? My number three, and this, this is going to rankle some feathers, I know. I'm going through my lists of historical figures and political figures, and Bill Clinton came yeah. up. Sorry. You know, I mean, it's just so obvious and so worldwide. He's on camera saying, I did not, you know, well, you know the whole thing. You've seen it. He's one of the top ones for me. Probably not the happiest guy on the planet at that yeah, time, at and that hopefully time. he's oh, yeah. fixed things. I don't know, but yeah. then again, he's still married to Hillary. Yeah. Um, I have number three, uh, Kane. Yeah. Fairly obvious. As not, mm. not Michael Kane. And not Kane, about. the wrestler. I mean, no. Kane, the guy that killed his brother and said, I don't know where he is. Yeah. It's a good one. All right, number yeah. two. Barry Bonds. <sighs> yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, come on. It's, it's all there. It's not just <sighs> statements that you have said or not said. Look at the size of you now compared to your first year. Yeah, as a rookie. MLB. I yeah. mean, are you serious? He's stealing bases. He's a speedy little runner. And then all of a sudden he becomes a oh. world-class hitter. Yeah. In the same vein, my number two is, and, and I was toying that this probably should be number one, but Lance Armstrong. Oh, yeah. I mean, just a colossal, colossal. Oh, he is your number he's one. He's my number one. And there's your number one. And yeah, my number yeah. one is Bill Clinton. So we obviously had there we go. some crossover there on the greatest liars of all yeah. time. So if you really want to be happy, you want to sleep well at nights, you want to have a good clean conscience, which I think helps inform a level of happiness, be as honest and, and upfront as you possibly can be. And uh, happiness is sure to come with it. If you enjoyed our brief moments together here at the Hale Center Theater, we're in Sandy, Utah. Uh, make sure you like this video. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, <laughs> you want to talk about a quick path to happiness, uh -huh. that's probably in the conversation. Doesn't get better than that. Mm.